Hello and welcome to lecture number 24 of electronic devices and circuits. In this lecture we will talk about the finite output resistance which is observed in the saturation region of the MOSFET. So in our previous discussion we found that ID is dependent independent of VDS. Let's see how it is independent of VDS. So in these two equations uh, of the drain current ID, we see that I, ID is dependent on the process transconductance parameter, aspect ratio and uh, VGS minus VTN square that is VOV square. So this equation indicates that ID is independent of VDS. Similarly, in this characteristic curves ID versus VDS, we find that in the saturation region, even though we are increasing the value of VDS, ID is constant. Similarly, in the large signal equivalent circuit, we find that this dependent source, this dependent current source is basically dependent on VGS but it is independent of VDS you can find through this equation and therefore a change delta VDS causes no change in ID that implies that the incremental resistance is infinite here incremental resistance one can find from this formula delta VDS by delta ID change in voltage across drain to source terminal divided by change in the drain current as we know that delta VDS causes no change in ID and therefore this ratio will be infinite and that's why there is no resistance in parallel with this particular current source now this fact is based on the idealization that is once the N channel is pinched off the changes in VDS will have no effect on ID here you can see that the channel is pinched off at the drain end and then if you increase the drain to source voltage it will have no effect on the drain current ID if you consider that ideal situation then only we will get this kind of curves where ID is independent of VDS the problem is that in practice this is not completely true so what happens in practice what effect will increased VDS have on the end channel once pinch off has occurred? So as you can see in this figure that the channel pinch off has occurred at the drain end and if now I increase the drain to source voltage then the pinch off point will move away from the drain end towards the source end. You can see here that the pinch off earlier the pinch off was taking place at the drain end but since I have increased the value of the drain to source voltage this pinch off point has moved away from this drain end and towards the source. So it will cause the pinch off point to move slightly away from the drain and create new depletion region. So you can see that since pinch off point has moved away from the drain end this, re this region will get filled with the depletion region. Now the voltage across the channel will remain same at VOV. You can see here the voltage across this channel from this point to this point is VDS sat which is equals to VGS minus VT which is my overdrive voltage. Whereas the remaining voltage delta VDS because we have increased the value of VDS. So the change in VDS is nothing but VDS minus VDS sat. So that excess amount of voltage will appear across this depletion region. You can see however the additional voltage applied at VDS will be seen across the new depletion region. Now this voltage accelerates the electron as they reach the drain end. Okay, so these uh, this extra voltage which is appearing here in the depletion region that basically accelerates the electrons which are present here in this channel at the pinch off uh, point and then these electrons are swept into the uh, drain region. However, at the same time one can note the length of the end channel will decrease 
and this phenomena is known as the channel length modulation you can see here that as I am increasing the value of VDS the channel, channel length is reducing you can see the earlier the channel length was for L now as I increase the value of VDS the channel length is only L minus Delta L okay the channel length is effective channel length is from the source end to this point and that is L minus Delta L if you further increase the value of VDS this uh, pinch off point will further uh, move towards the source end and therefore the length of the channel will further decay so this uh, change in the length of N channel is called as the channel length modulation and this channel length modulation is taking place because of the increase in the value of VDS now the question is since the channel length is reducing as we are increasing the value of VDS what effect it will have on the drain current ID so our next question is this how do we account for this effect in the drain current ID if you are increasing VDS then the channel length is reducing so it may have or it must have some effect on the drain current ID so how do we account for that so we know that ID in the saturation region is given by this formula 1 by 2 times mu n into cox into w by l times vov square and this formula is applicable when VDS is greater than vov it means your, your MOSFET is in the saturation region but in order to account for or in order to take into account the channel length modulation effect we need to multiply this factor uh, this particular equation by a factor and that is 1 plus lambda times VDS so when VDS becomes far greater than VOV then we include this channel length modulation into effect so now the formula for the drain current ID in the saturation taking into account the channel length modulation effect is this 1 by 2 times mu n into cox multiplied with w by l into vov square and the whole multiplied with 1 plus lambda times vds now here you should note that one addition of finite output resistance r naught will appear in the circuit of uh, in the equivalent circuit of large signal model so here you can see that this resistance is appearing here R0 so this R0 is appearing because of this linear dependence of ID on VDS see if you open this uh, if you simplify this circuit uh, this equation what you will find is this whole term multiplied with 1 plus this whole term multiplied with lambda times VDS that means now ID is linearly dependent on VDS so if you try to find if you try to find delta VDS by delta ID then you will get some finite value and that finite value is nothing but the output resistance R0 so now that R0 is connected across this current source because now this drain current ID is dependent on VDS earlier it was not when we have considered the ideal situation but in practical situation the ID in saturation region is dependent on VDS and in order to indicate that this particular resistance output resistance is connected across it now let's see the effect of this channel length modulation on the characteristics curve ID versus VDS before that what is the term lambda in this equation so the term lambda is basically a device parameter with the unit of reciprocal of voltage and the value of this factor lambda depends on two things the first thing is process technology which is used to fabricate the device and on the channel length L so lambda is dependent on these two factors and both the factors are important here this lambda is much larger for newer submicron technologies than for older technologies what is mean by that newer submicron technologies means the technology which is used to fabricate MOSFET or the MOSFET based circuits today whereas in older technology the, the length of the channel was around 10 micrometer if you go back to 1971 you will find that that time the length of the channel which was uh, for uh, in case of the MOSFET was around 10 micrometer 
whereas today we are manufacturing or fabricating this mosfet which are having the channel length in nanometers and as you know that the lambda is dependent the value of lambda is dependent on the channel length and that means lambda is going to affect the technologies now this statement says that lambda is much larger for new uh, newer submicron technologies that means lambda is inversely proportional to l because in newer submicron technologies the channel length is small as compared to the older technologies so for a given process technology lambda is inversely proportional to l you should remember that now here we have the characteristic curves of id versus vds which is showing us the effect of channel length modulation so here you can see that instead of having a straight horizontal line like this we are getting an inclined curve which are having some finite slope here and the slope of this curve will be what it will be delta id by delta vds right so the slope will be delta id by delta vds and 1 upon delta id by delta vds is nothing but r not so here slope can be given by slope is equals to 1 upon r not because r not is what r not is delta vds upon delta id now one important thing that we can observe here in this graph and that is if we try to extrapolate this curve or simply if we try to extend this curve towards left so each of this curve will intercept at a particular point on this vds axis like this curve is intercepting here similarly if i extrapolate this curve or simply extend this curve towards this side uh, in the left hand side it will meet here this curve will also meet at a particular point here and this curve will meet at this point so all these curve when extrapolated they will meet it at this point on the vds axis so this is the point of interception so here this vds is equals to minus va here the vds is equals to minus va at this point here vds is equals to minus va where this va is called as the early voltage va is called as early voltage so basically the similar kind of concept is present in bipolar junction transistor and that concept was given by the scientist whose name was j m early the name of that scientist was j m early and based on his name we call this voltage here as the early voltage this va is positive okay this minus sign is there because this axis is negative so vds at this point is equals to minus times va where va is a positive quantity now why it is minus 1 by lambda that i will answer you in the further discussion so for that let us refer to the whiteboard so here you can see that in this curve we we see that at this point the value of id is 0 right at let me write it here at vds is equals to minus va id is equals to 0 the drain current is simply 0 okay one more thing if you look at this particular equation here which is nothing but the equation of drain current id when mosfet is in the saturation region and we are taking into account the effect of channel length modulation and because of which we have multiplied this whole term by 1 plus lambda times vds now if i put vds is equals to minus 1 by lambda in this equation if if i put vds is equals to minus 1 by lambda in this equation then what will happen 
VDS is minus 1 by lambda, so lambda upon lambda is 1, 1 minus 1 will become 0, so ID will be 0. Then that implies ID will be equals to 0. Now if you compare these two equations, VDS is equals to minus VA, that is the early voltage, ID is 0 at this point and if I put VDS is equals to minus 1 by lambda in this equation I get ID equals to 0. So what I can write from this two equation I can write that VA is equals to 1 by lambda. Okay I got one important relationship here that VA is equals to 1 by lambda and thus VA is a device parameter with the dimension of volt. So this is my device parameter and its dimension is volt right now for a given process technology VA is proportional to the channel length L this VA is proportional to the channel length L why we can say that because we know that lambda is dependent on the channel length and lambda is inversely proportional right lambda is inversely proportional to the channel length l and here va is equals to 1 by lambda and therefore we can say that va is directly proportional to the channel length l next point is that we can isolate the dependence of va that is early voltage on L by expressing it as I don't want VA to be dependent on L and therefore we are expressing VA as we are isolating it from the uh, its dependence on the channel length L and therefore we can express this as VA is equals to VA prime into channel length L right where VA prime is entirely process technology dependent this VA prime is entirely process technology dependent with the dimension of the dimension of this VA is volts per micron the dimension of VA is volt per micron and you already know that the dimension of this length L is in micrometer micron means some, uh, simply micrometer right so VA is equals to VA prime into L. Now VA is independent of uh, the channel length L here, right? The range of VA prime is in the range of range of VA prime. Generally it falls in the range of 5 volt per micrometer to 50 volt per micrometer. This is the range right and here here VA is my early voltage this is called as early voltage okay so up to this point it's okay now let us try to derive the expression for R0 because 1 upon R0 is the slope of this line and this R0 will be required to draw the equivalent circuit diagram of the MOSFET in the saturation region So in order to determine that we should know that R0 is nothing but 1 upon slope. See from this equation what I can write? From this equation here the slope is equals to 1 upon R0. From the graph we note that slope is equals to 1 upon R0. So this implies that I can write R0 is equals to 1 upon slope right now what is slope here the slope is nothing but delta id by delta vds okay if you want to find the slope of this line so it is delta id by delta vds that will be the slope and therefore let us first find out the slope or we can write like this r0 is equals to delta id upon delta VDS and inverse of that that will be my R0 the output resistance R0 okay so let us first find out delta ID by delta VDS so delta ID upon delta VDS 
so basically we want to differentiate id with respect to vds okay a differentiate id with respect to vds so you will get delta vds here and id is 1 upon 2 cox times mu n and this multiplied with w by l multiplied with vov square and that multiplied with 1 plus lambda times vds this is the expression because we want to take into account the channel length modulation effect right now what will be the simplified equation here so see this whole term multiplied with 1 will be a constant for uh, this derivative so that will become 0 whereas this whole term multiplied with lambda times vds so what will you get here we will get lambda times this whole term so outside we will get 1 by 2 times mu n into cox whole multiplied with w by l into vov square and that multiplied with lambda right now this is my delta id by delta vds this is delta id by delta vds so now we can write that r naught is equals to 1 by 2 into mu n cox into w by l times uov square into lambda raised to power minus 1 that means this is is equals to right I'm, i can write it like this 1 upon 1 by 2 into mu n cox times w by l into vov square let me write it in one bracket this multiplied with lambda that is equals to 1 upon what is this term this term is nothing but id this term is nothing but id without taking into account the channel length modulation effect right this term is id without uh, taking into account the channel length modulation effect right so i am writing it like this 1 upon lambda times id 1 upon lambda times id now further so further what we can write here is R naught is equals to one upon lambda is what we have already derived it here one upon lambda is V A right one upon lambda is V A that is my early voltage so I can write here R naught is equals to V A upon I D now here let me put prime sign so that this uh, just to differentiate between the drain current when channel length modulation effect is considered and the channel length modulation effect is not considered so here we are not considering the channel length modulation effect so r naught is equals to va upon id prime let me write here where id prime is equals to drain current in saturation in saturation without taking into account the channel length modulation effect right channel length modulation effect is it clear so I can write here where ID prime is equals to this is the current without channel length modulation effect so let me write here where ID prime is equals to 1 upon 2 mu n into cox whole multiplied with w by l this multiplied with capital VGS minus VTN whole square or you can write it like this 1 by 2 times mu n into cox times w by l into vov square 
So the output resistance is inversely proportional to what does this equation indicates that output resistance R0 is inversely proportional to the drain current ID without taking into account the channel length modulation effect. And finally, we have a large signal equivalent model. Now see here, this is the model that we have derived when we have assumed that ID is independent of VDS. But practically, ID is not independent of VDS. For VDS far greater than VOV, if VDS is far greater than VOV, then what will happen? the channel length modulation effect will appear and because of that one finite resistance R0 will appear across this dependent current source. Okay. So this is a very important topic. Now let us uh, solve one simple numerical based on this. So an NMOS transistor is fabricated in a 0.4 micrometer process having mu n into COX equals to 200 micro ampere per volt square and VA prime is equals to 50 volt per micrometer of channel length. If L is equals to 0.8 micrometer and W is equals to 16 micro ampere, find the early voltage VA and this uh, device parameter lambda. Then find the value of ID that results when the device is operated without uh, with an overdrive voltage VOV equal to 0.5 volt and VDS is equals to 1 volt. Also find the value of R0 at this operating point. If VDS is increased by 2 volt, what is the value uh, what is the corresponding change in ID? Now you can determine VA and lambda very easily here. Let us solve this question. So here VA, what will be VA? VA is equals to VA prime multiplied with the length of the channel, right? So you just put these values in in this equation and you will find that this is equals to let me solve it first of all in Kelsey. So this comes out to be because VA is 50 volt per micrometer and that multiplied with the length which is 0 0.8 micrometer so VA is equals to 40 volt okay similarly what is lambda then the relationship between VA and lambda is VA is equals to 1 upon lambda that implies we can write lambda is equals to 1 upon VA and therefore lambda is equals to 0 0.025 V inverse okay so this is the value of lambda so we know the lambda here we know the early voltage now in the second part we are asked to determine the value of ID that results when the device is operated with an overdrive voltage VOV is equals to 0 0.5 volt and VDS is equals to 1 volt so here we have VOV is equals to 0 0.5 volt and VDS is equals to 1 volt. So remember whenever you have the value of lambda in your question you must use the equation of ID taking into account the channel length modulation effect and therefore I will write here ID is equals to ID is equals to 1 by 2 mu n into COX whole multiplied with W by L into VOV square and this multiplied with 1 plus lambda times VDS. Now if you put the values here in this equation you will find that ID taking into account the channel length modulation effect is 0 0.51 milliampere 0 0.51 milliampere right next we need to determine the value of R0 at this operating point. So R0, how to find R0 then? So R0 is given by early voltage divided by ID prime. What is ID prime here? That is the drain current without taking into account the channel length modulation effect. So VA you have determined that is 40 volt. 
this divided by now here you need to consider this equation 1 by 2 times mu n into cox that multiplied with w by l into v o v square so we will neglect this term now okay so if you solve that we will find r naught is equals to 40 volt divided by now this value comes out to be 0 0.5 uh, milliampere and therefore this is, is equals to this is milliampere and therefore r naught is 80 kilo ohm r naught is 80 kilo ohm okay last part if VDS is increased by 2 volt what is the corresponding change in ID so VDS is increased by 2 volt it means the change in VDS is by how much it is 2 volt so we can write Delta VDS is 2 volt so you need to find corresponding change in ID so we have the equation here we know that R naught is nothing but what is R naught it is nothing but Delta VDS upon Delta ID so using this equation we can write that delta id is equals to delta vds divided by r naught right and therefore the change in the drain current is equals to delta vds is 2 volt 2 volt divided by 80 kilo ohm and therefore delta id is equals to 0 0.025 milliampere right so this way you will get all the values so the some important relationship here is in this question this early voltage is equals to va prime into l then early voltage va is equals to 1 by lambda then this equation taking into account the channel length modulation therefore you need to multiply this term by 1 plus lambda times vds the next equation is the equation for output resistance r naught which is equals to early voltage va divided by id prime what is id prime here this is the drain current without taking into account the channel length modulation effect so here we have neglected this factor 1 plus lambda times vds okay and then finally in order to determine change in the drain current due to change in vds you will get from this equation so i hope it is clear to you all what is finite output resistance in the saturation mode of the transistor so thank you for uh this lecture and in the next module or in the next video rather we will discuss about the characteristics of pnp or uh, sorry p channel mosfet right there's a circuit symbol and its characteristics so thank you so much